<laughs> that song gets me fired up every time I hear it. Every time. So, one question I've been asked a lot is, what made you get back in the field? What's going on there? Uh, and that's what I'm talking about this morning. Uh, I'm back in the field in a big way because I want to finance going partner and I want to do it quickly. Does that make sense? Like if you're going to finance a big project, this is, this is big, write this down. If you're going to finance a big project, it helps to have more money. You follow the logic? No, I, I want to invest like crazy. I'm investing like crazy. It, when I'm out in the field, I generate cash flow that I can pour right back into my business to get it to scale to go partner. That's 100% what's behind it. When, when, when this partnership thing came out, I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Talked with Andy. Andy said, yep, go get it, Bo. Attack it. And that's why I'm out in the field in a big way. Now, has it been easy? <laughs> God, no. Um, I was rusty. I don't know if, if you've ever been out of the field for 17 years before. <laughs> I mean, there were several presidential administrations that have come and gone since the last time I was in the field. <laughs> I screwed up so much stuff in the beginning. I mean, I screwed up so much stuff. Holly was like, you did used to be good at this, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know if I remember it different, but I seemed like you were better at this than you are currently performing. It was a disaster. But I needed to do it. I needed to do it because I wanted to get aggressive. I didn't want to keep slow playing this. I, I need the finances because I need to invest like crazy. When you find a stud like Nick Greco, you need to fly to Denver, rent a meeting room, and do a training. You, you can't do that if you're Penny Annie. Does that make sense? Hey, you might want to write this one down too. You can't build an empire on a yard sale budget. Like, have you ever seen anybody in your neighborhood nailing an Apple sign to a telephone pole? Not like a picture of an Apple, but like Apple the company. It's like, yeah, there's an Apple thing, then there's a Tesla thing on the telephone pole. No, that's where yard sale signs go. If you want to build it big and fast, you're going to have to generate a lot of cash flow. That's, that's what I decided to do. I'll tell you what, it, keeps, it makes it easier to keep your mind right when you got cash flow. When, when I have cash flow, my mind is not on me and what I'm not getting and how it's not fair and I don't like this. And I, does it make sense? For two reasons. One, because I got the cash flow, and two, three, because I'm busy. When, when you're busy, it's easier to keep your mind right. Idle minds get confused. That's why when you find people that aren't growing, they get too much idle time, so they create confusion. I have zero confusion right now. I'm crystal clear. Holly and I are going partner, and I could not be more fired up about it. I'm crystal clear on what I need to do over the next little bit, and that's continue to produce at a high level. I need to be able to fly to, to Dallas like that, not having to question a last minute ticket because Brian Adams says, I need you to be in Dallas. I need to have the money to do it quick. Does that make sense? All right, so now let's talk about how. How can you stack up cash to go partner? I think that was the official name of my talk, stack up cash to go partner. How? One, believe that you're gonna be great at sales. It's an inevitability. It, when, when people have that, that kind of, I don't know, it, you're, you're not going to get great like that. It, just like riding a bike. Think about this. Would you have ever ridden a bike if you wondered if you'd be, ever be able to ride a bike? Like, like if you just rode a bike for a little bit, crashed, and like, I don't know about all that. No, you just kept working at it until you got good because you knew you wanted to ride a bike. It's the same thing with being good at sales. Anybody can be good at sales. I promise you, I was not good at sales when I got here. I was also not good at sales last November as I was figuring it out again. <laughs> I promise you, when I answered that ad, Andy didn't say, staff, staff, gather around. The one we have spoken of has answered our ad and he is here to sell. <laughs> it didn't happen like that. Does that make sense? I was, a re I was a disaster. I just had to figure it out. And so decide that you're going to be great at it and then just put in the reps. It's that simple. Just put in the reps. When you put in the reps, you will get better. And think about this. Let's say you book 30 appointments and you have a disaster of a week. Is that all that expensive of a tuition to pay 
to learn how to make $300,000 with your own pen. It's not that expensive of tuition to pay. Does that make sense? But we'll, get all, we'll just get all down about it. There are different levels of the stage now after all that dancing. I'm going to need some caution tape there. Gonna, I've seen how this movie ends. <laughs> but when you put in the reps with the determination that I'm going to get great at this, you will. It's an inevitability. You're already great at it. We just haven't gotten to that point in the timeline yet. So, so don't get impatient. Don't get frustrated. It's just part of the tuition. It's part of the tuition at getting really good at what we do. I think about, when I think about people that say that I just don't know that I can ever get good at it, I think about my buddy Mercedes. Mercedes Tron inspires the heck out of me. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but Gustavo is a bit excitable. Um, <laughs> she struggles with English, but when Gustavo got sick, she decided, I've got to do this. And so she put in the reps. And she's one of the top salespeople on my team now. It, I mean, that, you know what I'm saying? That inspires me. I mean, when I was getting good at the field again last November, I was going, if Mercedes can do it, you can do it, Stephen. If Mercedes can do it, you can do it, Stephen. <laughs> don't think these conversations don't happen. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, and, then, and then be a sponge. Get around top people and only around top people. Beware of people with words, but no fruitage, right? Look, look at a leaderboard. Look at a leaderboard. If they don't got a number up there, they don't know what they're talking about. If they got a number up there, they know what they're talking about. Find those people and be a sponge. All right, number two on stacking up cash to go, partner, overwhelm it with activity. Overwhelm it with activity. Here's where people get in trouble. When they open the door to chance. How do you open the door to chance? Be full-time and book 12 appointments for a week. You're opening the door to chance. Let me tell you how my production week this, went this week. Actually, let me tell you the end. The end is this. I wrote almost $13,000 before I came to Family Reunion. Thank you. Wednesday was one of the worst days I've had in the field in forever. Andy called me on Wednesday and said, you print money, Bo? And I said, not so far. <laughs> Oh my God, the people I talked to Wednesday, the one guy says, uh, he says, now explain to me why now that I'm older, life insurance is more expensive. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, the thing, and I'm, not, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to do it nicely. And he said, that, that, that don't make any sense. Explain to me one time why it's more expensive now. And I said, brother, because you're nearer the end than you were before. Here's exactly what he says back to me. Well, that's less time they got to cover me, so I don't understand why it's more expensive. <laughs> and I was like, sir, is there an adult with you? I'm not sure you understand how money and numbers work. There's a little Einstein's video that will help illuminate. Hey, let me tell you, in 20 years of doing this, I've coached many a guy through a slump. Guess what they all have in common? They're not running enough appointments. They're in a slump, having a tough time. How many appointments are you running? Oh, I did like 12 last week. That's why, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I had 10 appointments Wednesday and sold nothing. The only sale I made was convincing me that I could still do this again. You know, I'm like... <laughs> Like, Davies, let me uh, break this down to you. Here's eight reasons why I think that you can still be great at sales. That was the only sale I made all day. I felt better after it. But dear God, it was tough. But you know why, you know why I wrote almost 13,000? Because I had a day full of appointments Tuesday and a day full of appointments Wednesday because I had 30 appointments. Does that make sense? It's just math. So overwhelm it with activity. Don't penny any of your activity. You're setting yourself up. If I only had 12 appointments and I was full-time, I would be so stressed out. I would screw them all up. That kind of pressure, are you kidding me? I don't need that kind of pressure. I need to have so much that even I can squeak out a sale. Does that make sense? All right, number three. Dear God, have fun selling. Have fun. I don't understand it when people hate the field and then they struggle to understand why they can't build a team. I mean, it's like, hey, so I hate doing this thing. 
Do you want to come do it for me? <laughs> well, me, I, no, I'm a leader, but uh, I'm a leadership expert, but I hate the field. You should do it, though. I, can you see the conflict? I've gotten better at recruiting because I got back in the field selling. Oh, and by the way, it's a lot easier to coach when you're in the field selling because you don't buy all the bull crap, the, the boo-hoo story. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But have fun doing it. Anything can be fun. Somebody said to me recently, they said, it looks like you have fun all the time doing everything you do. And it's like, that's because I have fun all the time doing everything I do. It's not a chance. It's a decision. I have fun doing everything I do. Except for sometimes I forget and then I have a bad time. I go, wait a second, you're the guy that has fun doing everything you do. And then I start having fun again. It's a decision. Anything can be fun. I think about the TSA when I was flying to Dallas to go to Integrity. You know, have you ever seen the TSA folks? You ever just want to reach across and just make sure there's a pulse there? <laughs> what are you doing? I just, I, I, I need to know that you're still with us. I just <laughs> would feel better if you were actually alive. Um, you know, say, grab your bag. <laughs> but I know this. I know I could have a blast being a TSA guy. Because if I had to be a TSA guy, do you know what I'd do? I know exactly what I would do. I would learn magic. <laughs> I would do my job with flair and magic. I'd have that wand out in a minute. Beep, 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 Bouquet of flowers. Like, sir, is this your bag right here? This bag right here? You'll notice nothing in my hands. This is your bag. Is there anything in here dove-like that I need to know about? There'd be so many doves in the airport I worked at. Wait. Sir, are you aware that Homeland Security considers some lengths of scarf as a weapon? Anything I need to worry about here? I kind of want to be a TSA guy now that I'm thinking about it. Anything can be fun, you just gotta decide it's fun. Holly knows I have what's called sketch comedy coping mechanism syndrome. It's legit, I'm doing a fundraiser for us later. I've got a fundraiser for trust fall victims before that though, but. Um, <laughs> sketch comedy uh, coping mechanism syndrome is, uh, it's a very serious thing. It's where I take all the stuff in life that I don't like, and I turn it into sketch comedy. So when I run appointments, and they're crazy, <laughs> I get excited. I'm like, oh, God, this is good. <laughs> this is good. Who would play this guy? You know, I just, this is good. Because we have the same crazy stuff that happens to you. I still remember one of my favorite stories now, not in the time. It's funny now because I'm alive still. Um, <laughs> it would be less funny if I had died that day. I mean, y'all might laugh about it. <laughs> and if I die on an appointment like that, I encourage you to laugh about it. You know, it'd be my final gift to all of you. He died ironically selling insurance. <laughs> I'm in this house, and there's no sale happening there. And this woman, I swear to God, she was seven foot nine. <laughs> like a biscuit short of five bills. You know what I'm saying? Like cast a shadow <laughs> upon all the land. And I was like, man, there's really nothing I can do here, so I'm going to head on out. And I turned my back on her, which, write this down. <laughs> Should you find yourself in a similar situation, do not turn your back on a person of that stature <laughs> who has been lonely and locked up in her apartment. <laughs> As I'm going for the door, I get this. She could have palmed me like a basketball. And she said, 
Mr. Davies? Are you a married man? I was like, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I am. And she said, mm-hmm. Your wife sure do got a fine. And I can't say what she said next. And all I could think of is, I have a highlighter in my pocket. Like, if I stabbed her in the neck, how hard would I have to swing to get out of this scenario? If you run enough appointments, it'll happen to you, too. <laughs> hey, you should do what we do. <laughs> uh, just remember, the stuff that happens while you're out there is all part of a really cool story. People that don't sell insurance have lame stories. I'm related to a lot of them. It's just, remember that one time when the, I ran out of cake in the break room? That was wild, man. Those are the stories you're creating. And so have fun. It's so much fun. Uh, people that don't want to have fun, I'm like, you'll be dead soon anyways. Might as well have a little fun, right? <laughs> have some fun. You can find fun in just about anything. And the last thing I'll leave you with, as you're doing this, don't lose sight of what you're trying to create. Don't lose sight of what you're trying to create. Remember why you're in the field. You're in the field to go partner. Does that make sense? Don't get caught on rabbit holes. Don't, don't get frustrated with people and say, well, I'm just going to sell and I don't, I don't deal with that anymore. I don't, deal. Don't, don't lose sight on what you're trying to create. Guys, Holly and I have been working so hard to create something. It, 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 we know where we want to go. We're crystal clear on that. I want you to have that same clarity. Because, guys, when I'm, tell, I'm telling you, the opportunity you've got to go partner will blow your mind. I, I have been like, <laughs> I've, I've asked Paul and Andy way too many questions. I'm just, I just, I want to get more of it. You know what I'm saying? It's a massive opportunity we got in front of us. Let's go out and get it together. What do you say? All right. <laughs>